I'd still very much been finding my feet as a, as a vocalist still, you know, after playing in bands for almost like, well, yeah, definitely for 30 years now. So it's primarily been as a guitarist and with some backing vocals here and there. Um, but um, actually fronting a band is still like oh, quite a, uh, <laughs> still quite a scary concept. Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes in Hamish from Godthrum and many other bands. How are you doing today, my friend? Uh, I'm very good. Thank you so much uh, for the opportunity to talk about uh, our new album. It's greatly appreciated. Oh, same here. Same here. So, uh, you know, we followed the earlier releases. I know this is part two of a trilogy of albums. This is Distortions coming out August 18th. And uh, again, shout out to our dear friends at Earsplit PR for putting us together for this. But, you know, this is a bit of a, I don't know, I'm sure you probably shy away from the terminology supergroup. Most of the time when you hear that word, most people cringe. They're often <laughs> underwhelming and not as good as the hype. A few have been super, truly. But um, I do feel like this is a great amalgam of underground artists coming together. And uh, I, I, before we get into this, this is our first chat ever. So I, I like to always try to give our audience a little origin story of the group. So if you don't mind just sharing how this formed in the first place, and then we can fast forward to Distortion. Cool. Well, I mean, so uh, myself and um, Sean, the drummer, I've got a musical history of playing together for, you know, probably about 25 years now in different acts. We were in um, Solstice together. Uh, we were in My Dime Bride together a, a couple of times over and um and uh, and have been, uh, you know, great friends for, for, for such a, a, a long time. And um, I spent... Uh, a good uh, nine years, though, with uh, uh, Greg McIntosh in the Valenfire um, band, which was crusty death metal uh, with kind of, you know, po some punk and some doom kind of tones into there. And uh, and that was great fun. I loved, loved that for, for a good while. But then once doing the Decibel tour out um, over in America, um, made very dear friends with, uh, you know, the wonderful band Paul Bearer. And uh, they were, you know, fans of um, some of the old work that we've done, and they were very keen to talk about some of the albums and songs in in the past. And and then when I heard them, I was just blown away. I thought I thought they were absolutely incredible, and I just found it very very inspiring to then return to this style of music. And um, and so when I came back, just started jamming with uh, you know some dear old friends, playing some stuff that we'd done before, and and then that kind of quickly turned into wanting to create some new music as well. And uh, and so rushed into uh, you know the studio to record an, an EP, and then but then as the time went on, this became my you know soul musical concern and uh, and then it just kind of really involved into you know a very personal and quite passionate you know project for myself and uh, and so now the the band's you know grown up a bit in public uh, i really think there's there's quite a strong evolution uh, along the way that you can hear from the ep to the first album to the interim couple of singles and now distortions is a more expansive um affair with more diversity depth in it the contrasts ramped right up the, the darks darker the heavies heavier it's, it's riffy but it's also a lot more melodic and there's a lot more light shining through a dare say even some kind of hope in in the in the doom and the darkness there so uh, i'm i'm very excited for, for folks to, to to hear it because the, uh, these are songs that would put a lot of work. Uh, there was a lot of, um, you know, kind of rewriting and chance for the songs to really develop and make it, um, you know, make themselves known what they ultimately needed to be. So, um, so yeah, circumstance um, that uh, you know, we all lived through meant uh, that it was a lot more kind of working independently from each other, a lot more um, chance to kind of, you know, really refine and renew ideas that we, we, we had. And and then that brought us to the point where then recording this album and, and I can't wait for people to hear it. Right on. Thank you so much for unpacking all that, helping me with my segues. My notes <laughs> had things about layers and depth of tracks and how personal some of these songs sound, intensely personal, without the benefit of lyrics and guessing and listening over and over uh, but, you know, uh, 
some of the best doom uh, metal and, and extreme music. You can understand the, the vocals, which is wonderful. Uh, thank you. And uh, <laughs> as much as I love a gnarly vocal, it's also good to understand what, what's being said. And um, yeah, it does seem like a, a real thoughtful progression, even if we hadn't had the uh, global upset, if you will, and the, uh, and the pandemic and all these things. It just seems like it's been a very thoughtful progression. Everybody improving, everybody working toward the same goal. So it's, it is very... <laughs> It's an impressive record. I can't wait for people to hear it. I usually say that at the end, but I'm going to say it at the top. It's it's really took me by surprise, uh, even more so than than the previous one. I, I was very impressed with this record. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. my pleasure. So, you know, here we are. And you said everybody worked a little more separately. So, of course, naturally, I want to ask, uh, was... Is there a period of time like when is it when is it when is the song done right so just with uh, you know the the chance of being able to kind of you know listen back to things kind of over the they you know a bit of a luxury of time of not racing into the studio then just a chance for someone to think okay might this work better with a different vocal over the top and then just kind of trying it and uh, seeing what works better or not and then in doing so that in turn may then kind of inspire uh, revisiting another song for instance with what we've uh, what we've done there and uh, and so um th that was then quite a quite a bit of that where um you know you could leave a song for a while you know kind of think it's near enough done leave it for a while and then come back to it with fresh ears and um and find out okay yeah no let's let's you know pull the socks up on this one because another song we've been working on has you know kind of raised the game a little bit so um so this is why i mean like a song like devils for instance our, our new video out that song um predates um the the first album it's the only one that does it's the only one that was written before and uh, wasn't originally going to be part of the album after we'd recorded what we viewed to be the bulk of the album in the studio we um figured okay yeah we have got time let's throw this 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 song in we'd tightened up the arrangement and, and some extra harmonies and and then as we're recording it it now fit into the, the album a lot more so than if we'd have just recorded it um you know years back when the song had first been been written really so um, i do think sometimes uh, i'm schedules and restrictions can um, can be a helpful thing and uh, they can really kind of you know a deadline can really kind of focus <laughs> your efforts um but um but it was interesting this time around having more of a a, a luxury of time and um and trying to do as much as we can with it so um we found it a very inspiring process and um, hence why I'm so keen to just kind of you know forge on into the next chapter as well and and, and start writing and recording what we're going to do next of good course, times and, of course and then you uh, again as we uh we mentioned uh this is the second of a, a trilogy so you might have a concept of what's coming next or what you had envisioned and and that's taking mm -hmm. shape now as we're on the cusp of this release it, it's very that's cool right. that you're able to have the vision um, to look ahead also and and because that was very much uh, you know, something that's been spontaneous with this album as well. Um, uh, at the time when we did the first album, uh, yes, we called it Reflections and knowing that it was very much looking, uh, you know, to the past and, you know, appreciating, uh, you know, the great works of, uh, you know, the acts from before. You know, it's a real love letter to, you know, to Doom in there and you know you're trying to kind of reference in some ways your candle mass your paradise lost all all these these, these things in this glorious um, you know history of, uh, of this music so uh, and hence the name reflections suited that it was very much looking at the past but now with the second album um really wanting to kind of take that starting template but twist it a bit and you know mix it up move move it around and as i say really push the contrast to the extremes then uh, the title distortions seem to work very very well because it's good parallel not only with that but also then with you know the distorted guitar sound that's the center of everything and um and then so we're looking at you know the past and you know then the present so then thinking okay well what we're going to look towards the future so and hence projections looking at okay what can we do to move you know, forward what else can we bring and incorporate into this, this music so um so it's only um you know much kind of later idea i mean this is part of a this, this visions trilogy but um it's just very much kind of symptomatic of very inspired kind of time that i'm just really loving 
what we do, we're loving working together and just make the most of uh, you know the time that we got. Wonderful. You love to hear it. I want to call back to just a few minutes earlier when you were discussing the harmonies and another bit of my notes. Uh, we were, I was uh, reflecting myself on the uh, the split of the vocals on the harmonies. And so when the uh, uh, another process related question when you are writing or whoever brings in a song, is there a sorting hat on who gets to sing a part? Or not, um, because it does seem very, again, just very meticulously put together in the song. Making. Yeah, and sometimes it seems, um, you know, quite obvious from the outset. And, you know, Pictures Remain was always very much the idea of having a much more kind of a gentle, ethereal kind of song. So that's where, you know, Catherine doing multiple layers of harmonies is just the, the real kind of way forward. And um, and then, uh, you know, t- taking an expansive song like Follow Me and the epic, then it's just kind of a voice to suit the mood at any kind of given point in time. But we did mix it up and try things kind of differently. Um, the song Obsess and Regress is, you know, a real fuzzy, sludgy, riffy kind of song. And originally I was doing vocals um, on the verses that were a bit more akin to like, some of the kind of style I was doing on the first album and um and uh, it was kind of working but it was also kind of kind of very crowbar as well it was like you know getting kind of you know echoes of Kurt Winstein just being you know awesome uh but it's like oh yeah but you know crowbar got that nailed very very well and this would probably stick out a bit so then just thought okay well let's try and flip it on its head here and get Catherine singing the verses of um obsess and regress and when doing so almost adding kind of you know shades of a bit of kind of an aussie kind of vibe and to it which um which was nice and then alternating that with the, the choruses as well so that was one where we did try a good couple of ways first i went through um a few different attempts of vocal styles for uh unseen and heard as well because it's such a, a riff heavy song a real riffy slab began the song trying to find the most appropriate vocal with it was kind of interesting because i'd still very much been finding my feet as uh as a vocalist still you know after playing in bands for almost like well yeah definitely for 30 years now so it's primarily been as a guitarist and with some backing vocals here and there um but um actually fronting a band is still like oh quite a uh, <laughs> still quite a scary concept and um so finding what works well for me as well has been um, you know part of that journey but also Catherine coming in as well and knowing that she's going to be singing some sections it's not solely on me kind of makes me feel a bit more relaxed too and then what she has done as well has kind of inspired me to try and push my own range and grow you know kind of a bit of strength and confidence with um you know the cleaner vocals on reflections among the exalted as uh, an example i initially tried doing that song with a much cleaner vocal style but i just didn't really have, have the confidence to um to you know, kind of see it through so we tried it and then it was just like okay now well now let's just try it again but gonna you know kind of do a bit of a nick holmes you know this circa early 90s impression and whoa yeah 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 it works sounds very paradise lost <laughs> you know but uh, so but it was great because it suited that at that point in time but right now this album is uh is god and this is us and this is you know what we're totally totally um you know into and you know 100 behind and so um uh, well yeah we'll see what folk think anyway but we love it and ultimately that is what drives us you know at the moment right now we're just you know so proud of what we're doing so you know believe totally in what we're doing and it's it's so very rewarding you should be proud you smashed it on the vocals is definitely uh, a growth here and i think along a long enough timeline we're all copying paradise lost right we're all copying <laughs> nick. we're all living in nick holmes's world and 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 not the other way around um i will just add one last thing about Catherine's vocals is i don't know if you're familiar with the group the ota that came out last year they're uh, the sort of uh n- um an offshoot of sabrosa who broke up a while back so it's mm-hmm. yeah. members from that band and you know a lot of uh layered female harmonies and so Catherine's work reminded me a lot of that uh really cool nice, really, really wow, nice gonna check that go out. check that record out the the otolith that was one of our top records for 22 so um yeah let's delve into a little more on the track by track and again i'll shout out the track names and you can Share whatever you feel like with us. We would be grateful to hear. 
cool. Uh, so the album opens up, and again, they're all epic, but the album opens up with As Titans, which is just a terrific opener. Uh, I, I think you're, you're exactly right. Well, I hope you're exactly right, uh, because we certainly think the same. Uh, anyway, that it's like, it's a statement of intent. This is you know, a song that's really quite crystallizing what it is that we're doing right now. It's... It, it represents the riffs, the harmonies, the you know the the kind of lead work, and with uh, you know the multiple vocals, the harmonies. It's it's kind of all in their ambient midsection, and uh, you know a real kind of ascension of big, almost kind of um, you know quite, quite major key sounding towards the end is like you know some some hope shining through the dark clouds there. The second track is Devil. Devils. So head down, tattoo, hair, head banging, riffs, and a uh, nice bit of sludge at the end, and uh, and yeah, and, and a video, you know, a video by Ash Pierce, who uh, did such, such such a great job. Uh, yeah, just just very nice to see the band represented in this way. So yeah, nice introduction for people to check us out visually as well <laughs> nice the next track is echoes hopefully not to confuse old school pink floyd fans yeah so uh very um very personal uh songs very much tribute to uh, uh an old school pink floyd fan who was a very dear friend of ours who sadly uh, uh, left us a couple of years ago and uh, so wanted to kind of honor him with uh, this song very melodic cleanest vocal i've ever and um and the lyrics pretty much lifted directly from the eulogy i spoke at his funeral well done i'm sorry for your loss and uh music is the healer it's what we use to get through sometimes and uh, it is. We, whether we make it or we attach ourselves to a song out there already and uh, again tough tough times in the world we are losing people left and right this week and this year and years past mm. so again my sympathies obsess and regress we talked a little bit about earlier that is the next track yeah just fuzz pedals a plenty <laughs> get it get get the fuzz pedals out and heads down and just you know dirty sludgy but with a you know the, 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 this you know a lovely melodic voice over the top of it um obviously not when i'm singing <laughs> and uh and the midsection that really kind of just back to that kind of early 90s kind of sound so, uh, yeah, good, good, good sludgy fun. <laughs> Indeed. Unseen Unheard is the next track we also touched on. Uh, so r very riffy and uh, real kind of you know, mid-paced stomping and um and uh, and great to have uh, a guest appearance from Scoot, um, uh, you know, my old Valenfire mate and, uh, and, you know, just one of the best friends I uh, hope to have. So, uh, yeah, very pleased to have him as part of this, too. Right on. It's it's always so hard to be in a band and uh, and have and maintain relationships. So I'm glad to hear that you oh. everybody's on good terms, hopefully. And, uh, you know, even if, you know, bands run their course, everybody's cool when it's over and you move on to other things and, and people yeah. look back fondly. The industry is tough. Friendships are tough creatively it's tough but nice to hear that you guys are all good yeah we've had our ups and downs over time but uh you know we've known each other for you know a good 30 years and so yeah it's that you know that's that's the most important thing follow me is the penultimate track big epic and uh I'm featuring another guest appearance from another dear old bandmate to uh, I think the world of as well. And that would be Aaron Stainthorpe from My Dying Bride as well. He came in and um, uh, did just, yeah, a perfect bit of narration in his inimitable kind of voice. So when um, when had originally been demoing the album, uh, I did, you know, the kind of demo version of, of the bit that he ultimately does and was kind of thinking, yeah, I, I'm trying to go for what I, in my mind was a bit of a, maybe a bit of a Christopher Lee or Hammer Horror type kind of thing. But then I was just thinking, do you know what, you know, who would absolutely make this <laughs> just, just, just perfect. And that would be Aaron. And so when I asked him if he'd do it, then um, I was just absolutely, um, you know, so just, just blown away when he said that yeah love to do it and and then he said you know and you know no fee for appearance just make you know donation to the candle lighters charity which is uh, a charity supporting families with children with cancer so um uh, just perfect and uh the song itself uh, is probably my favorite on the album it's probably most at present the, the song that i'm kind of most proud of that i've done it's uh it's a big epic there's a lot in it 
there's uh, you know a lot of harmony work a lot of guitar layers uh, which is something i've always kind of loved ever since um how our minds blown by the midsection of to live is to die by metallica you know from it drops out the clean guitar you get the you know that guitar swells coming in that's like in you know kind of an orchestra coming in and then there's all those big harmonies that was a big influence on me and so yeah I, a, a bit of what I kind of call a kitchen sink moment, like you're just kind of throwing everything in there. And maybe sometimes in the past when recording, you kind of think, oh, okay, but how would we replicate this live? Who cares? You know, it's, this is the album. This is, this. you know, let, let it be everything it can be. So uh, that song is, yeah, ambitious, but I think it, I think it works very well. Lovely. And uh, Aaron is everywhere this year. I don't know if you know this. He's been on like 20 albums minimum yeah. that I can think of that either were recorded last year and came out in the last year or so. And this year, many appearances, but his is his his work here is terrific. He's he's incredible. What can you say? And uh, I'm, I will link actually, I, I, you know, I love deporting that charity also. So I think we'll link that in the description since you mentioned it and support Thanks. him a little more. And then obviously the, uh, the we, we talked a little bit about this already, but pictures remain is the closer and a definitely like a light to the dark and contrasting you talked about a light to the dark so more kind of universal themes of kind of loss uh but i mean you know we feel loss because you know we have love so it's um you know it's it, it's something to be kind of you know acknowledged and is is part of um of life and um and so um musically um, yeah, it, it came out very kind of quickly and easily. It didn't really have much in the way of rewriting in there. And, um, and guitar solo towards the end of it as well that um, recorded on my friend Martin's old Les Paul, the, the guy who echoes as a tribute to. So it was nice getting you know, his, his guitar on, on, on that. So um, uh, yeah, piece of work very, very proud of. And um, I just think everyone's just turned did such an amazing job Catherine's voice and you know the lines she's written are just incredible Sean just sounds just just great throughout the album he's just he's, he's most solid and just cavernous drums and the musicality Bob brings in with the bass playing I think is just super melodic when it came to that song I was even you know saying something like you know kind of listen to like Pentangle and you know the bass player Danny Thompson is just going to like the kind of the old English folk stuff that I love so much and and then you know he did these bass lines that's just a bit of movement towards it but I think it just works great yeah I think uh it's, it's just remarkable of performances I, everyone's turned in I'm, I feel very very fortunate to be playing with such great people right on a little bit of Alice's Narrows there from Sleep as well on the bass, like very buttery parts there, uh, yeah. to use a word not often used in music criticism. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, obviously, you know, work is progressing on the follow up already. But what else do you have on tap for the rest of the year? I want to wa wrap this up and give you back your evening in a minute uh, so oh well <laughs> I've, I've, I've more interviews <laughs> to do so uh, which um you know it, it's certainly not a um a chore because you know it, it's, it's great getting the opportunity to speak to people about the, this album that we feel so very passionate about we're looking forward to then um, playing some of it live very soon as well we're, we're playing in london next week we've got an album launch show in september um, at Leeds um, Brudenell, which is a great venue where we've played in the past with Witch Sorrow and Paul Bearer, and I did yet another guest appearance with them when uh, when we did that uh, for Dunn as well. So it's a great place. So yeah, just looking forward to then check out people's reactions both to the album and then also uh, to the songs in our live setting as well. So um, you yeah, know, just look forward to you know. Getting, hopefully getting the opportunities to keep on doing what we're doing. Appreciate the time we've got as we've got it and um, meet new people. And uh, I get to share, you know, shared passions for, for music and art. It's a good place to stop. Hamish Glenn Cross of Godthrum. Thank you so much. Lovely chatting with you. And thank you so much for sharing your story with us and our audience. And best of luck. This album's killer. And again, uh, we'll, be sh we'll be promoting it and sharing it and reviewing it and all the things. So thanks for hanging out with Ghost Cult. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. An absolute joy speaking to you. Thank you. All right. Cheers, as you would say. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. <laughs>